Why is mommy crying, guys? <laughs> mommy, <laughs> why are you crying? The onion, the onion is, is making me cry. Why do onions make you cry? Good question. I'll be right back, I'll answer it for you. Let's go. <laughs> Where did mommy go? Welcome to Ryan Toy Video. Did you know that babies only blink about two times per minute? That's a long time without blinking. But babies, they also cry a lot, so they don't need to replenish their tears as fast as you and me. It's okay, Jack Jack. Oh, it's okay. Did you know that our eyes produce three different types of tears? The first one is called emotional tears. <laughs> It's okay, Jack Jack, don't be sad. I'm right here. When babies are sad, they cry, just like Jack Jack do. But you can also have other emotional tears, like happy tears. Like when it's your birthday and you open a present and it's a puppy. Oh, I'm so happy, I can cry. <laughs> Sean, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm okay. I'm just so happy. Here's oh. a tissue. Okay, thank you. Don't worry. These are happy tears. Oh, yeah, this is a happy, happy. I'm very happy. Happy birthday. <laughs> the second type of tears are reflex tears. Reflex tears protect your eyes from irritant in the air. Just like how goggles protect your eyes. Have you guys ever cut open an onion? Does it make you cry? <laughs> oh, oh, don't worry, I'm just cutting an onion. The onion releases irritant that goes in the air and the eyes produce reflex tears to protect itself. Oh, uh. Our third types of tears are called basal tears. We always have basal tears in our eyes so they can make sure that our eyes don't dry out. Our body produces between five to 10 ounces of basal tears per day. So it's between this much, five ounce, look, this is what it would look like. Whoa. And the 10 ounce. Whoa. So this is five ounce of basal tears, and this is 10 ounce of basal tears. That's a lot of tears to produce every day. Wow, we learned so much about all the different type of tears we have. Now it's time for a quiz. Question number one. Why do we have tears? Is it because A, our three kinds of tears shows emotion, protects our eyes, and prevents our eyes from drying out? Is it B, they were leftovers for when we were a baby. Oh, it's okay. Or is because C, we drink water. So why do we have tears? It's because to help us show emotion, protects our eyes, and preventing them from drying out. Question number two. How many kinds of tears do we have? Is it A, three tears? B, a hundred tears? Or C, a million different type of tears? The answer is A, we have three different types of tears. Emotional tears, reflex tears, and basal tears. Question number three. When you cut an onion, what tears does that produce? Is it A, funny tears? <laughs> is it B, purple tears? Or is it C, reflex tears? The answer is C, reflex tears. Great job! Did you guys get the answer right? If you didn't, it's okay. You can try again next time. For now, let's go back and tell Ryan all about tears. Okay, let's go. Woo! Boss baby, stop crying. You keep crying. It's okay, boss baby. So, Ryan, that is why you cry. 
Oh, okay, but why is Boss Baby crying? Oh no, maybe he needs something like a nap. Oh, okay. There, there, Boss Baby. There, there. Bye-bye. Yay, he stopped crying! Yay! Thank you for watching our Why Do We Cry video. Bye! And remember, always stay happy and rise up. Don't cry. Bye! Hey, Ryan, what are you doing? Working out. <laughs> oh, Ryan, you're stinky! That's because I'm sweating, Mommy. Wait, oh. wait. Why do we sweat? Good question, Ryan. Why do we sweat? Come on, come here. I'll show you why. Huh? What? Huh? It's not working. Whoa! Hi! Did you know that humans, like me and you, are not the only one that sweats? That's right! Animals sweat too. Like dogs, they sweat. Cat, they also sweat. And even cute little pandas can sweat too! But, why do we sweat? We sweat is because our body is cooling itself off. When we sweat, it's our body's way of regulating our temperature. For example, if we are working out and exercising, our body temperature increases really, really, really high. And in order for our body to tolerate it so we don't overheat, our bodies releases little beads of sweat from your sweat glands in your skin. These sweat glands work really hard by pushing out water, salts, and other minerals. Once the sweat is on your skin, it evaporates by the air. This evaporation helps cool you off. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Why is sweat so stinky? Well, sweat doesn't have a smell until it mixes with bacteria in stinky places like your feet or your armpit. Phew, wow, that's stinky all right. <laughs> okay, I need a shower. I'll be back. Did you know that the average human body has between two and five million sweat glands? That's a lot, lot of sweats. Dogs sweat by panting. They breathe really, really hard and starts to drool like that. Then the drool evaporates and they're cool. Cats sweat through their paw pads like this. Just like when our hands and feet get really, really sweaty, sometimes you can see the little cat's paw print. Look. <gasps> also, there are some animals that don't sweat like we do. Come on, let's go check out some animals that don't sweat. Animals like rhino, pigs, and hippos have to use mud or water to keep themselves cool. They roll around in mud or hang out in water to keep their body temperature down. Oh, look at that pig over there. With all this learning, I'm breaking a sweat. Look. Whew. Now it's time to take a pop quiz. Question number one, why do we sweat? Is it because of A, we're sad? <laughs> or is it because of B, we forgot to do our homework? Oh no, I didn't do my homework. Or is it because of C, our body is cooling itself off? The answer is C, it's our body's way of cooling itself off. Question number two, why does sweat stink? Is it because of A, it mixes with bacteria in places like our feet oh, and our armpit. Oh, somebody needs a shower. Is it because of B, you have a pet dog? So cute. 
or is because of C, you did not eat your breakfast yet? The answer is A, it's because it mixes with bacteria in places like our stinky feet and our armpit. Question number three, how many sweat glands does an average human body have? Is it A, two to five million sweat glands? Or is it B, only one sweat glands? Or is it C, trillions and trillions of sweat glands? Did you guys guess it? It is A, two to five million sweat glands are in a human body. Wow, we learned so much about why we sweat. Now let's go back and tell Ryan all about it, okay? And possibly we need a shower too, so let's go. Woo! So Ryan, that is why we sweat. You get it? Okay. Well, Ryan, you got so much better. Yeah, Look. I'm so strong. Look what I can do. What? Oh. <sighs> Mommy, I really do stink. I gotta go take a shower. Bye guys, thank you for watching. And remember, always stay happy and rise up. Bye, I'm gonna go to the shower now. Yeah, you should, Ryan. Ryan, check this out. Whoa, you got new plants. Yes, these are Venus flytrap, and they eat meat like this. Wait, wait, why do they eat meat? <gasps> Good question, Ryan. I'll explain it to you. Let's go, guys. What? Whoa. Hi, everybody. Okay, so did you guys know that some plants have adapted to eat meat? These are called carnivorous plants. But why do they eat meat? These plants eat meat because they get their nutrients from bugs and insects like those. Oh, I am not a fan of insects. So I'm going to get out of here. Oh. The type of soil that these carnivorous plants live in don't give them enough nutrients. So they adapted to eat meat. Check out this plant in real life. This carnivorous plant is very, very well known. Can you guess what it is? That's right, it's the Venus flytrap. Look, wow. So first, a lot of these carnivorous plants have this red color like that. That helps attract insect to it. And the Venus flytrap use these hair-like pieces to snap shut whenever it feels something on its leaf. Look. Let's try this. Take both hands out, put it together like this, and your little fingers are like the little hair on the ends of the leaves of the Venus flytrap. Then, when something finds its way in between the leaves, you snap shut so that it can't escape, see? Now, pretend this stick right here is a little insect. We're going to touch the leaves of the Venus flytrap and see what happens, okay? All right. Whoa! Oh no, it closed shut, look! <laughs> it can't get out! Wow, that's so cool. Whoa, that was fast and crazy. Look at this. Whoa, wow, that was so interesting and crazy, right? Once the Venus flytrap closed tight, the insects can't get out because the hair on the Venus flytrap locks in place. That makes the perfect trap. It only takes the Venus flytrap one second to close shut. And once it closes in on the insect, the Venus flytrap uses its digestive glands to break down its food and use it for nutrients. Pretty cool, right? So we learn all about the Venus flytrap. But what about the other carnivorous plants? There's butterwort, pitcher plant, and drosera. All of these plants have what looks like 
refreshing water droplets or super yummy nectar. But don't let that fool you. They only look delicious, but to insects, they're dangerous. Humans don't have to worry. Look, we're too big. Whoa, that are some crazy carnivorous plants. But we learned so much about them. So, time for a quiz. Question number one. Why do some plants eat meat? A, they're so bored. B, they're looking for a best friend. Or is it C, they get their nutrients from bugs and insect? The answer to why do these plants eat meat is because C, they get their nutrients from bugs and insects. Question number two. What color attracts the insect to the Venus flytrap? Is it A, blue? Is it B, red? Or is it C, periwinkle? So what color attracts the insect to the Venus flytrap? The answer is B, red. Did you guys get it? Red? Question number three. How long does it take the Venus flytrap to snap close? Is it A, one second? Or is it B, 10 minutes? Or is it C, a whole hour? The answer is A. It takes the Venus flytrap one second to snap shut. That was so much fun. I hope you guys learned so much and get the answer right. And if you didn't, it's okay. You can try again next time. For now, let's go back and tell Ryan everything we learned about these type of meat-eating plants, okay? Whoa, they ate even more bugs. Oh. Hey, Ryan! Whoa, that's so cool! Okay, guys, I hope you guys learned a lot about plants eating meats. And remember, always stay happy and eat up. Bye. Thank you for watching. Bye. Hi, everybody, and welcome to my space station. Look, this is my control room. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Mommy. Where would you want to go today? Mars. <gasps> That's a good planet choice. Wait, but Mommy, what are all the other planets? Good questions. What are the other planets in their solar system? <gasps> Let's find out. I'll be right back. Okay. Ooh. Where did Mommy go? Mommy. 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 Whoa. Whoa. Mommy. Mommy, where are you? Whoa. Oh, hi there. Did you know that Earth, the planet that we're living on, is the third planet? from the sun. Whoa, the sun is hot today. There are eight planet total in our solar system. And Earth, the one we're on right now, is the only planet known so far to have life on it. You can't find a dog or a Venus flytrap or human like us anywhere else yet. How cool is that? Let's learn all the planet's names and what they're known for. Are you ready? Let's go. This is the planet song. If you know the order, sing along. Planets revolve around the sun. Mercury is number one. Venus is number two. It's too hot for me and you. Earth is the place to be. It's planet number three. Now let's learn some more. Mars is red and it's number four. Jupiter is number five. And it's known for its giant sun.
is a very tiny model of our solar system. Did you know that all of the planets in our solar system revolves around the sun? That means that the sun right here is in the middle and all the planet goes around the sun. First, we have Mercury. Then Venus, whoa. Then Earth, the planet that we live on with the tiny moon there, I don't know if you can see. Here's Mars, which looks pretty red, right? And then here is Jupiter, look how big it looks. Then here's Saturn, with the whole bunch of rings around it. That's pretty neat. And here is Uranus. Then the eighth planet, the furthest away from the sun, Neptune, right there, look how blue it looks. This planet name is Mercury. It's the first one that is closest to the sun. And it goes around the sun super fast, the fastest. Whoa. The second planet here is Venus. If you think Earth is hot, you wouldn't like Venus. It gets to 870 degrees. It is the hottest planet in our solar system. I'm sweating just being so close to it right now. Oh. And the third planet here is, you know what this is? That's right, it's Earth, the planet that we're living on right now. Pretty only planet that we know of that has life so far. Pretty cool, right? This fourth planet here is called Mars, also known as the red planet. It's red because it has lots of iron oxide, which makes the soil look really red. This planet here is the biggest planet in our solar system. It's so huge, wow! Do you remember its name? That's right, it's Jupiter. It's 11 times bigger than Earth. And the sixth planet here in our solar system name is Saturn. It's known for its giant ring. Not only does Saturn have rings, it has over 60 moons. Look, oh, that's a lot of moon. Earth only has one moon. This next planet is super interesting. The seventh planet is Uranus. It spins, get this, on its side. So instead of spinning around like this, it spins around like this. Oh. And this last planet here, number eight, is Neptune. And guess what? It's really windy. Hold, ooh, icy, and very, very blue because it has methane gas. Yay, now that we know all about our planets in the solar system, let's sing along with me. This is the planet song. If you know the order, sing along. Planets revolve around the sun. Mercury. Question number one, which planet in our solar system that has life that we know of so far? A, is it Mercury? B, 
is it Mars? C, is it Earth, the planet we're living on right now? Hint, hint. Or is it D, Jupiter, the biggest planet? The answer is C, Earth. Did you get it right? Yay! Earth is the only planet that we know of right now that has life. How cool is that, right? Question number two. How many planets are there in our solar system? A, is it 60? B, is it 870? C, is it eight? Which one? And the answer is C, eight. There's eight planets in our solar system. Let's quickly name them again. There's Mercury, there's Venus, and then there's Earth, there's Mars, Jupiter, super big, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Did you get it? Last question, number three. Which planet in our solar system is the biggest? Do you remember? Is it A, Earth? Is it B, Jupiter? Or is it C, the moon? And the answer is B, Jupiter. It's the biggest planet in our solar system. Look how big it is. Don't come any closer. So huge. Wow. Good job answering the pop quiz. And if you didn't get it right, just try again next time. Now that we know all about our planets, let's go back and tell Ryan, okay? Let's go. Wow! Okay, guys, I'm gonna go to planet Mars to find Mommy. Where did she go? And set to Mars. There we go. Bye! Okay, three, two, one. So those are all the planets in our solar system. Wait, Ryan, where'd he go? <gasps> Did he go to outer space without me? tornado can spin as fast as 300 miles per hour? Wow. Also, our tornado can destroy buildings, power lines, whoa, look up there, and uproot trees. Ah. A tornado is a rapidly rotating columns of air that forms during the storm oh. and connects with the ground through a funnel cloud. So now that we know what our tornado is, we need to know why they form. First, we need a very, very special kind of storm. Can you guess what kind of storm? It's loud, strong, and they can be scary. Did you guess what kind of storm? That's right, a thunderstorm. Oh. Oh, oh, I'll be right back. 
but the kind of storm you need to produce a tornado whoa, is called a supercell thunderstorm. That means it's a storm with rain, hail, lightning, and fast wind. Whoa! Now, why does a tornado form from a supercell thunderstorm? It's because warm, moist air meets cool, dry air and the wind's direction change. Now, let's check it out. First, we have warm air rising. Ooh. Cool, dry air sinks. It becomes a vortex or funnel where the inside is warm, but the outside is cold. It gets stronger and stronger, and it spins faster and faster. Finally, it touches the ground, and it becomes a tornado. Here it is, hi. Now for the fun part. What about we make our own tornado? Are you guys ready to create our own tornado? Look at this. Whoa, so we colored the water blue to make it more interesting. This is heavy, it's like, ugh, work out. Okay, on a count of three, we're gonna flip the bottle over to see if the tornado form. Ready? One, two, three. Yeah! Ah! Oh no, what do you guys notice? What happened? There's no tornado. Aw. Do you guys know what we should do? What if we try to just swirl the water like so? Woo! Ooh. Whoa! What do you guys see now? Do you see how as the water begins to move, it creates energy and it makes it flow downwards. Look at that. Now that's a real tornado. And as the water flows down, the air from the bottom bottle flows up to replace it. That was so much fun. You ready to see it again? Okay, so what do we have to do? We have to shake it. Whoa, the water's spilling out, but it's okay. Whew. Whoa, look at that tornado go. Woo. Wow, that was so much fun making this awesome tornado. But now, let's go and meet a real live tornado. Let's go. So now we're outside and there's a giant storm happening behind us. Do you guys see it? There's some big clouds here and it's getting, it's getting pretty windy. These are perfect condition for a, a, a tornado! I wonder if it's a nice tornado. Let's see. Hi, Mr. Tornado. Well, howdy there. Uh, wait. What are you doing out here? Don't you know how dangerous tornadoes are? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Well, I'll warn you a little bit about us. But you have to promise to keep yourself safe if you ever see one of us again, all right? Okay, so what makes tornadoes so dangerous? Well, you see, we spin really fast. 300 miles per hour, right? You're absolutely right. Some of us can spin that fast. We're also unpredictable, too. So what does that mean? That means we can pop out of the storm at any time, at any place, and it can be a weak tornado or a strong one. You don't know till you know, you know? So, what are we supposed to do? If you have a basement, get to it. If you don't, go to the lowest floor and find a safe place in your house that isn't close to windows, like a bathroom or a closet. That's some good advice, thank you. That's right, so get on and Get safe. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Tornado. Bye! So now that we know so much about Tornado, let's take a quiz. Question number one. What is our tornado? Is it 
a hurricane? Is it your best friend? Or is it rapidly rotating columns of air that connect a thunderstorm to the ground? That's right. A tornado is a rapidly rotating column of air that connects a thunderstorm to the ground. Next question. Why do tornadoes form? Is it because warm, moist air meets cool, dry air and wind direction changes? Is it because they are late for dinner? Or is it because they are looking for their money? That's right! A tornado forms because warm, moist air meets cool, dry air and the wind direction changes. Question three. What should you do to stay safe from a tornado? Is it let's go to the basement or safe room on the lowest level with no windows? Or should we dance in the rain? If there's a tornado, should you just eat some yummy candy and watch YouTube videos? That's right! If you see a tornado, the best way to stay safe is to go to the basement or a safe room on the lowest level where there is no window. Great job! Now that we learned so much about tornado, let's go back and tell Ryan, okay? Let's go! Whoa. That's how a tornado is formed. And what is an earthquake, right? I'm gonna explain it to you, okay? Be okay. right back. Whoa! Where'd mommy go? Wait, what, where, what, what? Whoa! Hi there! Did you know that earthquake means there's a sudden violent shaking ah, of the ground? But what makes the ground shake? Is it because I'm jumping up and down? Or is it because the earth is growing bigger and bigger and bigger? Woo! Or is it because the earth is made of plates that slide around on top of hot molten magma? Yes, that's right! The earth is like this orange. On the inside, it's squishy and full of fluid. Woo. On the outside, the orange peel is like the Earth's crust. The Earth's crust is broken up into what we call tectonic plates. Whoa, look, they go back together. All along the cracks of the tectonic plates are where earthquake happens. Pretty cool, huh? Did you know the place where earthquakes happen are called faults? There are three different kinds of faults that make earthquake happen. One, two, three. We are going to demonstrate how all these happen. Are you ready? Let's pretend these puddings are like the inside of the earth. The pudding is like the magma. Look how jiggly they are. Whoa. The Rice Krispie treats are like the Earth's crust. The first type of fault is a transform fault. This means that the plates 
slide and slide past each other just like this. The second type of fault is called a divergent fault. This means that the plates pull away from each other, look. And the third type of fault is called a convergent fault. This means that the two plates push together, whoa. This is how mountain and hills happen. Whoa! So those are the three kinds of faults that cause earthquakes. What? Well, what is that? Whoa! Whoa, did you guys feel that? That was a real earthquake. I wonder how big that one was. Did you know that you can measure earthquakes? They get score on how strong they are. And they go all the way to 10 on what is called the Richter scale. The bigger the number, the stronger the earthquake. Whoa. So, an earthquake that measures a 2.5, whoa, whoa, is smaller and it doesn't cause as much damage, but an earthquake that measures an 8.5. Whoa! 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 Whoa, do you guys see? That's a lot of damage. Whoa! So now that we have all this amazing knowledge on earthquake, it's time for a pop quiz. Are you ready? Question number one. Why do earthquakes happen? A. Is it because the season changed? B. Is it because the earth is so bored? <sighs> or is it because C. Earth is made of plates that slide around on top of hot molten magma? That's right, the answer is C. Earth is made of plates that slide around on top of hot molten magma. Question number two. How many kinds of faults are there? A, is it 10? B, are there three kinds of faults? Or C, a hundred type of faults? That's right, the answer is B, which is three. There are three kinds of faults. Final question, number three. How big does the Richter scale go? A, 10, B, one, or C, one million. That's right, the answer is A, which is 10. The Richter scale goes from one all the way to 10. Yay, good job. You guys answered all the questions correct. And if you didn't, it's okay. Just try again. Good job. Thank you for trying. Now that we learned so much about earthquake, whoa, one is coming, so I better go and tell Ryan, okay? Whoa! Okay, all stable now. So Ryan, that's how earthquake happens. That's very cool, Mommy. I hope an earthquake doesn't knock down this tower. Wow, this is huge and giant. That's so cool, Ryan. Oh, uh, hey guys, hey. What? Whoa, this no. is really cool. No.
Did you know that rainbows have seven colors? There's green, there's yellow, there's violet, there's red, there's indigo, there's blue, and orange. Wow, that's a lot of colors, seven. Wow, what's wrong, Rainbow? Oh, the Rainbow doesn't look too happy. Wait a minute, something doesn't look right with the Rainbow. <gasps> I know, it's in the wrong order. Did you know that the colors of the Rainbow are always in the same order? What is it again? What is that order? Hmm. <gasps> it is Roy G. Biv. Say it with me. Roy G. Biv. 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 R is for red. O is for orange. Y is for yellow. G is for green. B is for blue. I is for indigo. V is for violet. Roy G. Biv. 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 You got it, that's it. That's the order. Roy G. Biv. There we go, now the rainbow looks so happy. So now we know the order and the color of the rainbow, but why did the rainbow appear after the big storm? Oh no, I think a storm is coming. I better use my umbrella. Oh, I better run inside the house. I'll be right back. Is the storm over? Oh, yay, it is! Yay! Now let's see if we can find that rainbow. Where is the rainbow? Ah, ah, there it is! Rainbow! Yay, look at this! Oh, wait a minute. This is not a real rainbow. This is just a pool float. Let's test it out. Oh, this will be so much fun in the pool. So when a storm comes and it rains really hard, it leaves water droplets in the sky. These droplets refract, which means bend light. So when the sun shines white light on the water droplet, the light bends. And we see all seven colors because they bend at different angles. Red is first, orange is second, Yellow is third, green is fourth, blue is fifth, indigo is sixth, and violet is seven. Roy G. Biv. So seven colors total. The first person to discover how a rainbow works was Sir Isaac Newton. He shines a white light on a prism like this. I'm gonna use a flashlight. Let's test it out. Did you guys see the rainbow right there? Isn't it neat? I also heard there is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So let's go catch that rainbow, let's go! Look, there's a rainbow over there. Let's see if we can find the treasure at the end of the rainbow. Hurry, let's go! No, we can do this, we can do this, come on. Are we getting any closer, you guys? Are we? Ah, 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 the rainbow is so far away. I don't think I can ever reach the rainbow. What should I do? Who are you? Hello, I'm a leprechaun. Are you trying to get a hold of me, pot of gold? I was trying, I was trying to get to the rainbow, but no matter how fast I run, I don't think I can ever get to the rainbow. That's because the rainbow never really ends. As long as the water droplets are in the sky, the sunlight will make the colors appear at the same distance away from you. So if I keep running, I'll never get to the rainbow? No, dearie. Oh man, but then how do you know where your pot of gold is? That's me little secret, but I can share some with you if you want. Yes, please. Thank you so much, Mr. Leprechaun. You're welcome. Don't spend it all at once. I will try my best, but these look so delicious. So, thank you. Yeah, what, what is this? Oh, this is some awesome glasses. What'd you guys think? 
Now that we know so much about rainbow, let's take a quiz. Question number one, what are the colors of the rainbow? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet? Or is it pink, green, gray, turquoise, black, blue, and tan? Or is it white? Question number two. Why do rainbow appear after the storm? So leprechaun can hide their gold, sunlight shines on water droplets, and they refract lights, or is it hot outside? Question number three. How many colors are there in a rainbow? 50, one, or seven? Great job, I have so much fun learning about rainbows with you. Now let's share this pot of treasure with Ryan. Let's go. Woo! And that's how a rainbow is formed. And look what I brought for you. What is that? A one million dollar. You are, I didn't even know that was in there. Wow. Oh, oh they're just chocolate. <laughs> chocolate million dollars. Oh wow, it's huge. Okay, so yeah. And Chocolate coins, wow! <laughs> Thank you for watching our rainbow video. Bye! Bye. Well, I enjoy my chocolate. <laughs> Hi there. Did you know that the first earthling that orbits the earth was a dog? Wow! <laughs> Humans didn't get to go into space until four years later. And when humans did go into space, they knew they needed spacesuits. But why do we need spacesuits? Because the atmosphere in space is different than Earth. Space can be too cold when you're far away from the sun. Woo! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! And too hot when you're too close to the sun. Oh. Also, there's no, there's no air in space. If we don't have any air, we can't, right, breathe. Without spacesuits, astronaut can only survive for about 15 seconds. That's not a lot of time. Oh no, I better go put on my spacesuit. Be right back. Whoa, that was close. That's why we really need spacesuits when we go out of Earth's atmosphere. So let's check out all the part to a suit that we need if we were to go out to outer space. Did you know that the whole spacesuits weigh around 280 pounds? That's more than a dog kangaroo. And that's without anybody inside. Here are all the things to keep us safe while we go on an adventure into outer space. Our whole spacesuit let us breathe inside the suit. Okay, let's put it on. So excited, always wanted to be an astronaut. Oh, now I just gotta put on the sleeve, one side and the other side. Yay, zip it up, buckle my belt. What you guys think? Next, we have our space boots so we can walk around. All right, let's put it on. Woohoo! What do you guys think of my space boots? Do you think I can do the moonwalk? <laughs> Is this the moonwalk? No? Okay. <laughs> Next, we got our handy dandy gloves to protect our hands. One hand in, another hand. Then our helmet protects our head and doesn't let air escape. All right, you guys ready? Woohoo! What you guys think of my spacesuit? Now we are ready to go on our adventure to outer space. Let's go! Woohoo! Woohoo! I'm so excited to go to outer space. Oh, are you guys ready to blast off? All right, five. Four, three, two, one, blast off! Wow, wow look at all these things up in space. Oh, I see the moon. 
Whoa! <gasps> and I see Mars! I wonder if anybody's there in Mars. Ooh! <gasps> the International Space Station! Hi! Oh no! What's that? <gasps> it's a meteor! Oh, we better get out of here! <gasps> so, since we learned so much about astronauts, let's do a pop quiz. Number one. What was the first Earthlings to orbit space? Was it A, a cat? Was it B, a bunny? Or was it C, a dog? That's right, it was C, a dog. Question number two. Why do astronauts need space suit? Is it because a, the atmosphere in space is different than Earth. Or is it because B, they need spacesuit to go to sleep. Or is it because C, they look cool. What do you think? They do look pretty cool. The answer is because A, that's right. Because the atmosphere in space is different than on Earth. Question number three. How much does a spacesuit weigh? Does it weigh A, 100 pounds, B, 280 pounds, or is it C, 500 pounds? Oh, that's pretty heavy. The answer is B, 280 pounds. Yay, good job on answering all those questions right on the quiz. If you didn't get them all right, it's okay. You can try again next time. Now that we know why we need our spacesuits, let's go back into our spaceship and tell Ryan. Right, I gotta put on my space helmet. All right, let's blast off and go home to Earth! Woo! Everybody yawn. I yawn. Ah, you yawn. Your mommy yawn. Your daddy yawn. Some animals yawn too. Panda yawn. A cute little puppy yawn. Cat yawned. And a lion yawn too. But why do we yawn? Do we yawn because we're sleepy? Do we yawn because we're bored? Do we yawn because we saw somebody else yawn? All this yawning is making me oh, yawn too. But the question is, why do we yawn? We yawn because your brain needs to cool off. This is your brain and it's been working hard all day. And so it needs to cool off with more air. Wah! When you yawn, ah, you breathe in more air and it goes in your body, into your head, and cools off your brain. Think of your brain like a big computer. Wow. <laughs> when you use your computer, it warms up and up and up and it gets super hot because you're making it work a lot. And when your brain works super hard, it starts warming up and then you ah, yawn. So it needs to cool off. So all day, everything we do requires your brain to work. It could be playing video games. It could be working out. It could be science experiments. So make sure you get some rest. Did you know that yawning oh, is mm. also contagious? So if I yawn, oh, you do too. Did you yawn? 
humans and animals can use yawning as a way to communicate with each other without words. So if I wave to you, you wave to me, and we just both said hi without choosing words. So if I yawn, my dog will yawn too, and they will also yawn because they can understand me and how I feel. Now that we know why we yawn, let's take a quiz. So why do we yawn? Because we're hungry? Because we, because we smell bad? Or because we need to cool off our brain? Fun fact, did you know that guinea pigs yawn ah, to display anger? Oh, it's okay, they're there. They're there, you're gonna be fine. All right, to recap, so why do we ah, yawn again? Is it because we're itchy? Is it because we're ticklish? <laughs> no, the reason why we yawn is because we need to cool off our brain. Great job! Now that we all know why we yawn, let's go tell Ryan. Woo! Ah, so guys, that is why we yawn. Guys, guys, oh, I guess they're asleep, so. Ah, nap time. A volcano is a hill or a mountain on Earth's crust that's connected to the magma chamber underground. The best part about a volcano is the lava and the magma. <gasps> Did you know lava and magma are two different things? The magma is underground, whoa, woo! And lava is when it's on the surface. So only after the magma breaks the Earth's surface it's when it's called the lava. Oh, look, it's coming! Ah! Oh no, the floor is lava! We gotta run! Ah! Oh, wow! Look at the eruption! <coughs> wow, there's so much ash in the air. We gotta go, okay? Come on, let's go! Wow! Volcanoes erupt because pressure is being forced out of the Earth's surface. Sometimes there's too much pressure and it just explodes. Wow, so just like if you take the soda can and you shake it and pressure start building up and up and up, it will explode when you open it. Just like a volcano does when the Earth crusts open. Whoa, crust, did somebody say crust? Yes. Like a pizza crust? Yes, the earth crust. You're right, Gus. It's kind of shaped like a pizza crust, too. Mmm, can I have some? Sure, of course. There's plenty of pizza to share. Oh, oh. Gus! You have to learn how to share. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> so if you cut open the earth and take out a piece that looks like a pizza slice, the earth crust will be in the same place as where the pizza crust would be. Wow, this looks super yummy and delicious. Mmm. Some volcanoes explode so big that it makes a huge hole that you can see all the way from outer space. Wow, look! I see the volcano right now! Some volcanoes even have produced a whole island like Hawaii. <gasps> I have an idea. Let's go to Hawaii. We're in Hawaii. And guess what? Got my sunglasses. <gasps> got my beach ball. Woo and got my pool noodles. Let's get swimming in Hawaii. Woo now let's go on an adventure inside a volcano, let's go! Whoa, woo-hoo, whoa, we're here! So now we are underneath the Earth's crust and do you guys hear it? I hear lots and lots of rumbling. Whoa, whoa, let's get out of here, whoa! Woo, whoa, it was a close one. 
Woo! Oh no, it's getting full of ash and gas in here. Whoa, we're getting close. I can see the magma. Let's keep going. Whoa! Get out of here while we can. Let's go. Whoa. Oh no, guys. The volcano is about to blow. The floor is magma. We got to hurry. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Whoa. That was so much fun. Let's do a pop quiz. Question number one. Where does lava flow? On the Earth's surface? The North Pole? or in the glacier? The answer is the Earth's surface. Question number two, where does magma flow? On Antarctica, underground, or is it in a tornado? Magma flows underground. And last question, why does volcano erupt? Is it because they're full of yummy pizza? Mm. Or is it because pressure is being forced out of the Earth's crust? Or is it because that's how soda is made? The answer is, is because the pressure is being forced out of the Earth's crust. If you got it right, good job! And if you didn't, it's okay, because we're learning right now you can answer and try again. Mommy's coming back, let's prank her. Hey Ryan, that's why a volcano erupts. Wait, where's Ryan and where's Daddy? Whoa! Not again, you guys! Yeah. Thank you for watching our volcano video, bye! bye. Hi again, so why does lightning happen? Wow! Did you know lightning happen is because of electrostatic discharge between the cloud up there and the ground down below. So static electricity is like when you rub your socks across the carpet and then you shock someone. Lightning is just like that, except bigger and stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. See? Whoa. When a storm like that happens, that static electricity in the air. Static electricity creates a current. And it works its way from one cloud to another, or it touches the ground. Whoa, see it's coming! Whoa! Just like that. Let's get out of here. A storm cloud is like a battery. Look at that. Plus at the top, minus at the bottom. Now, think of a whole bunch of batteries stacked from the ground all the way to the clouds. Whoa, did you guys see that? Once all of the batteries are connected, that's lightning, watch out! And then again, Whoa! So when lightning happens, it disturbs the air. And the sound that you hear, you guys hear that? That's thunder. Do you guys hear that? Do you see that? What is that? <gasps> Who are you? I am Thor, son of Odin, god of thunder. That's right, Thor, god of thunder. You're the perfect person to help us learn all about lightning. Can I ask you a few questions? Of course, I know all about thunder and lightning. You know that big ball of flash? How is it created? Well, that big flash you see is when the negative energy in the sky connects to the positive energy in the ground, creating a channel for the electricity to connect. Wow, 
And how strong is it? How strong is it? It can contain up to one billion volts of electricity. A billion volts? That is super strong. Can you handle all that power? Uh, of course, I'm Thor, son of Odin, god of thunder and also lightning. Can you show us? Sure. Wait, Thor, you forgot your hammer! Oh, let's see. Yeah. Oh, if I get this hammer, I can control lightning. Ah, it's, it won't even move. How? What am I doing wrong? It won't budge. Ah, ah. That's something. How are you doing that? Bye. Now that you guys learned so much about lightning, let's take a pop quiz. Question number one. So why does lightning occur? A, it's because of electrostatic discharge between the cloud, way up there, to the ground, way down below. Or is it because of B, Captain America is angry. I'm angry. Lightning strike! Or is it C, a volcano? Oh no, it's erupting! Oh no, guys, a volcano! Do you guys know the answer? It's A, it's because of the electrostatic discharge between the cloud and the ground. Question number two, what sound is made from lightning. Is it A, a mouse squeaking? Or is it B, a lion roar? Or is it C, thunder? Well, what'd you guys guess? The answer is C, thunder. Did you hear that? Did you guys hear the thunder? Oh, it's super loud. Question number three. Lightning can carry up to how many volts of electricity? Is it A, five volts? Or is it B, 10 volts? Or is it C, a billion volts? Did you guys guess the answer? It is C, a billion volts. That's a, such a huge number. Good job learning all about lightnings today. And if you didn't get them all right, it's okay. You can try again next time. Now, let's go back and tell Ryan all that we learned, okay? Let's go. Whoa. Okay, guys, let's tell Ryan all about lightning. But where is Ryan? 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 Ryan, you in there? Yeah, Mommy, I was hiding from the lightning. Is it still there? It's gone, Ryan. Let's come out and play. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Thanks for watching. And remember, always stay happy and rise up. Bye! Bye. 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 You are so much fun. Whoa, whoa. Is that a tsunami? Uh oh. Mommy, mommy. What happened, Ryan? The pool overflowed and now there's a giant wave. <gasps> oh no, like a tsunami? I think so, but mommy, how do tsunamis happen? <gasps> Good question, Ryan. Come on, explain it to you. Let's go, guys. Hi. Did you know that tsunamis can move as fast as 500 miles per hour? <gasps> I see one right there. Run. Whew. That's as fast as a jet plane. Is that a jet plane? Duck for cover! So a tsunami is a sudden large sea wave or a series of waves due to water displacement. But why does tsunami happen? Because there's a movement of energy throughout the water. <laughs> okay, so tsunamis usually happens because of four different causes. <gasps> Number one, earthquake! 
if an earthquake is big enough or if it happens underwater, it can travel through the water and its energy can cause a tsunami. <gasps> is that another one? <gasps> Thanks a lot, earthquake. The second cause of tsunami is underwater volcanic eruption. When a volcano erupts underwater, like so, oh, the water must go somewhere and all the energy that comes out of the volcano forces its way through the water, making a tsunami. Oh, look, I see a volcanic eruption underwater right now. Oh no, we better run away from that too. The third way a tsunami can happen is a submarine landslide. Sometimes if there's a giant amount of ice or debris or rock that slide through the water, it will cause a tsunami on the other side. The fourth reason that could cause a tsunami is falling meteor. Yup, that's right. Even giant falling meteors from space can crash into the water and create a tsunami. <gasps> that's a meteor right there. Oh no, dodge it! Ah! Let's take a look at how this happens. So this science experiment will show us the difference between regular wave and tsunami. Here we have the land. And here we have the ocean. So if we turn on the fan like so, what wave will go this way towards land because of the winds and tides? Wow. Look, look at Gus and Moko. Whee! <laughs> but a tsunami is different because water is displaced and energy will move through the water. We'll create the tsunami using this board. So you can see the difference. Let's say a powerful earthquake hits and underneath the water, the plates will move. Wow, do you feel it? <gasps> this board will demonstrate what will happen when the earthquake creates a tsunami. Look, you will see the water rise up because the water is being displaced. Wow. Then you will see the energy move sideways. Oh no, guys, be careful. the tsunami form growing taller and taller and it will smash against the land. Watch out Red Titan and Combo. And look, the tsunami is carrying all this stuff back into the ocean. Look, there are towels in the ocean, there are beach balls in the ocean and they're floaty. Carrying back and all the rocks too, it's going back into the ocean. Wow, that's such a powerful tsunami. But it's okay, they're okay, right? Oh, could you imagine if this tsunami is in real life? It would have been super powerful and strong. Well, now that we learned so much about tsunami, let's take a pop quiz. Number one, how fast can a tsunami move? Is it A, 500 miles per hour? Or is it B, 100 miles per hour? Or is it C, only one mile per hour? Did you guess it? It is A, 500 miles per hour, as fast as a jet plane. Question number two, why does a tsunami happen? Is it because of A, because there's a movement of energy through the water? Or is because B, it makes a dinosaur extinct. Sorry, dinosaur. Or is it because C, because there's a giant shark in the water. Look, there's one right now. <gasps> oh, it's a friendly shark. Hi, Mr. Shark. Did you guess it? Why does tsunami happen? It's because A, there's a movement of energy through the water. Question number three. What can cause a tsunami? Is it because of A, an angry, angry whale? 
or is it because of B? Earthquake, underground volcano, landslide, and meteors. Did you guess it? The answer is B. What caused a tsunami? Earthquake, underground volcanoes, landslide, and meteor. Yay, you guys did so great. And if you didn't get all the answer right, it's okay, you can try again. Now, let's go back and tell Ryan everything that we know about tsunami, okay? Let's go! Hey, Ryan, I'm back. Hi, Mommy. Did you learn a whole bunch about tsunami? Yeah. Thank you, Mommy. Bye. Remember, only happy lives. Bye. Please click on one of these videos for Ryan Toy Review more fun.